Welcome to the Nutra Medical Report. And of course, on the first hour on Wednesdays, we have Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Foundation. That's LaRouchePAC.com, LaRouchePAC.com, and LaRouchePUDB.com, the Executive Intelligence Review. We have lots of topics to discuss. Harley, let's start from the top and talk about the uh, issue of Hillary Clinton, what's been going on recently, and uh, the death threats that have occurred against her because of policy she's done uh, contrary to Obama and the globalist puppet masters that wanted her to do certain things, and her quick change in the last year to fall in line with those uh, demands, especially since Libya, Tunisia, and now, of course, the plan to, yeah. to strip uh, Syria. And, uh, and she continues to do things which follow the globalist uh, marching orders, which are basically the Russians are saying yet, and uh, the Chinese, and are now the Pakistanis. Uh, this is a situation where and now Obama has finally got himself into trouble. And remember the, uh, the uh, editor-in-chief of a uh, news journal in, uh, in Florida that actually had to resell his business because he wrote an article that maybe it's time for the Israelis to consider assassination of Obama if he so won't allow Atlanta, the Israelis. In Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, yes. Well, actually, there was also yeah. a journalist down in Florida, too. Yeah. Well, yeah. Look, look, we start at the top. Uh, we're putting out a leaflet. It's available on our website, and it needs to get out quickly in large numbers on the terrible mistake of Bill Clinton. And as you probably know, your listeners probably know, uh, LaRouche has for a long time tried to take the Clintons in a proper direction. And this was very strong in the late 1990s after the... Uh, Asia crisis in 97, when Clinton instructed his then Secretary of the Treasury, Rubin, to make a very strong statement, not a penny will go to bail out the banks. Uh, actually, that one occurred after 98 with the LTCM crisis. A hedge fund blew out. It nearly toppled the whole financial system. And the Federal Reserve under Greenspan came up with $16 billion and made the banks come up with $16 billion to stop the unraveling from going on. At that point, Asia was on the edge. The banking system was demanding a bailout. And Clinton put out a statement through Rubin that there will not be a penny for the banks. And then Clinton, in September 1998, made a very strong statement at the Council of Foreign Relations luncheon in New York City, where he said the current financial system is a mess. The monetary system is in the worst crisis since the end of World War II, and we need a new financial architecture. And new financial architecture was the Clinton-Rubin code word at the time for what LaRouche was calling for for a new Bretton Woods. Now, it was the next week that Gingrich launched the Monica Lewinsky campaign. And so Clinton, who was on a good trajectory then, uh, was was forced to go back into a defense of his own presidency. Remember that people like Al Gore and Joe Lieberman, Lieberman was a Democrat at the time, were saying that, oh, that Clinton should resign. They were, there was a big gang up on him. We led a fight. We led a fight to get Democrats to get back in and, and say, look, this is a, a minor case. We've got much more important things to do. Uh, and Clinton stayed in office, but it was during this period of time also that Larry Summers and others convinced Clinton to sign the bill that repealed Glass-Steagall. So we lost a lot in that 97 to 99 period, and Bill Clinton lost a lot of his fighting spirit. Now, until recently, Hillary's been working very closely with the Russians and the Chinese to try and stop this crazy Obama administration from blowing things up. But that changed Literally. at the time of the Libya intervention. Yeah, we're not just talking about blowing things up a little bit. We're talking about a thermonuclear conflict that these exactly. idiots could start. Exactly. And whatever problems people may have with the Clintons, they were smart enough to know that nobody wins in thermonuclear war. And the last thing you want to do is get into a blinking match with the Soviets, or the, the Russians, rather, and the Chinese. Exactly. Uh, so Hillary had worked very diligently with Sergei Lavrov, who's the foreign minister of, of Russia, 
very important figure in Putin's close uh, collaborators, to constantly have a channel of discussion. So she could call up and say, look, Obama said this, but ignore it. Look, we're doing this, but this is not serious. We're not going to do anything. Let's keep the discussion going. That was right. broken with the Libya intervention, which Bill Clinton knew Obama committed an unconstitutional offense by ignoring the War Powers Act over the Libya situation. Right. Now, the other key Democrat in this was John Kerry. Kerry worked with John McCain to stop a rebellion in the Senate of Democrats and Republicans who were going to demand that the War Powers Act either be applied or that Obama be held in contempt. This was a bipartisan move, uh, Democrats and Republicans, and it was McCain and Kerry who worked with Harry Reid and uh, Mitch McConnell to put this down and say, Obama's doing what's right, this is the right thing, we have to accept it. At that point, there was no one on the Democratic side who stood up and said, this is unacceptable. I mean, maybe Kucinich did, maybe a couple of others. The only one on the Republican side who did was Ron Paul. Now, you had other people, like uh, Bruce Fine, a former Reagan administration Justice Department official who came out and said this is impeachable. But no one in the higher levels stepped forward against Obama at that point. So what LaRouche is saying in this leaflet is that Clinton has made a terrible mistake. We hope he will correct it, because if he doesn't, it may mean the end of our nation. And we got that out all over Washington yesterday, including the people in the Clinton networks, including the Republicans. And LaRouche followed it up with a statement today where he said the Republican Party is doing nothing with its four candidates except re-electing Barack Obama. Yeah, it's actually a lot of money to make sure that he gets elected. Uh, well, there's a lot of money to nominate Romney, who would be the loser. Well, I, I don't understand. Uh, the latest thing that I don't understand is alliances between uh, Ron Paul and Romney, because it's obvious that neither attacks each other, and they didn't attack in 2008, but also this time, that uh, Ron Paul's run uh, ads in Michigan where he's not actually done any campaigning, but he's run ads against Santorum, when Santorum is a true uh, pro-life conservative. And the fact is that I, it does. the logic defies me as to why Ron Paul's organization would support uh, Romney. Well, I'll tell you what I think is happening is that the deal is on that the Republicans will nominate probably Romney and they'll lose to Obama. And, you know, the, the, the more the Republicans campaign, the stronger Obama is. And Obama is a hated figure. I don't, I don't know. I think, that, I think once it gels together, whatever candidate becomes a Republican, I think, though, that people are going to have to hold their nose if Romney gets the election. I think any of the other candidates, no matter what, how dark their past, whether it's Ginrich, Santorum, uh, or Ron Paul, if any of the other candidates other than Romney, I still think that Obama's beatable. Obama has done so many terrible things, has oh, screwed up totally the economy. Totally beatable, but here's what we've got to do, Dr. Deagle. We've got to clear the deck and get some other Republican in there. I don't, the think the, I, don't, I don't think that's the, the uh, solution either. What we have is we have a series of factions that are not uh, coming together. And I don't think uh, parachuting another candidate like, for example, one of the things they're talking about is a brokered convention and bringing in Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush is going to, we've had enough Bush. Let's put it that no, way. No, it shouldn't be a Bush, but what, there are some Republicans who are not so bad as the candidates are well, that are running. I, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's a candidate issue. I think it's the fact that the Republican Party has to decide what its core policies are, and it has all these disparate groups. So it's not really a candidate issue. It's right. more it's more of a what are we as Republican issue.
Welcome back, and uh, let's go through this analysis of topics, and we have a lot of issues to talk about. Uh, Obama's thermonuclear holocaust, Bill Clinton's terrible mistake. We talked about this briefly. Let's get into some of the details on it, because uh, you mentioned a bit about what's going on, but there's actually been death threats against Hillary Clinton, yeah, who was, who was uh, independently going against the grain. I don't know the details, but I've been told by very reliable people that there have been serious threats against the Clintons. Going back to, you may remember what happened in South Carolina in the 2008 campaign. Bill Clinton was essentially called a racist by the Congressman Clymer from uh, South Carolina. And there were very serious threats against Clinton. Uh, not coming from normal people, but from higher levels. You know, I, I think, you know, during the break we were talking about something. We were talking about the Scotland-England relationship. And, you know, for you and me, this is natural because we think in historic terms. Most Americans don't think historically. And as a result, they're always caught off guard by events. Right. And if you think about it, there have been, what, four or five presidents who have been assassinated. And virtually every single one of them was assassinated by a British operation because they were American patriots. Exactly. And the idea that the British continue, and by British I don't mean the English people, I mean British finance, British intelligence, continue to run these operations. For example, their role in setting up al-Qaeda, their role in the setting up of the United States for the Vietnam War. You know, if you know the history, you know this. And someone like Bill Clinton was never very fond of the British. He oriented more toward Germany and Russia. And so it was natural that Hillary, as Secretary of State, would look toward the Russians, who you and I were also talking about this. The Russians are our historic allies. Well, in fact, uh, Bill Clinton spent some time in Russia and right. had friends in the Russian Communist Party. Uh, so it's a natural. Firstly, historically, we bought Alaska from the Russians back in the 1860s. Uh, it's natural that, as, as uh, Lyndon's mentioned, that we should have a Trans-Alaska Pipeline and high-speed rail. Uh, it's just a natural alliance, two continental powers. It just and makes the, sense. It, it goes back to the very beginning of our nation, where Catherine the Great organized something in Europe called the League of Armed Neutrality, which was an anti-British operation to defend the American Revolution at a point in which we were completely isolated with no allies. So it wasn't just the French with Lafayette, but it was the Russians, the Austrians, the Swedes, and this was very significant. During the Civil War, Tsar Alexander II mobilized the Russian fleet to go to San Francisco, Boston, and New York to help keep those ports open in case of a British attack on the ports to defend the South. The Brits were supporting the South to try and have a civil war to destroy our nation. So these are just natural historic developments. Now, Putin is probably more American by far than Obama, in, yeah, exactly. in terms of at least the way he thinks. And given that's, that why he's fighting against the, American, that's why he's fighting uh, against the oligarchs and against the uh, British money and the force uh, by Kudrev, who is a, a British operative, to try to force the Russians to buy European sovereign debt. And also, he's for developing resources and the physical economy for the Russian people. Right. But he realizes Russia has a weakness. Their population has been shrinking because of the effects of communism in the post-communist era. There's a demographic crisis. And so Putin realizes that he needs help both in terms of manpower and in terms of credit and technology. Right. And he is turning to the United States. He's repeatedly made offers to the United States, and we've repeatedly rebuffed them. And now, under the influence of that British stooge Obama, we're deploying forward forces surrounding Russia with anti-missile defense systems in Europe, with our naval deployment in the Persian Gulf and the Mediterranean, with Obama's newfound interest in American military power in Asia. And our generals are basically saying, what the hell are you doing? We don't have the resources in depth to sustain this kind of deployment. Now, what Lyndon LaRouche is saying, and General Dempsey, the head of the chiefs of staff, has not said this yet, but he should say it. 
is that the reason they're doing this is they're not planning this as a long-term deployment, but as a short-term deployment, because the ultimate British strategy is to get the world to the brink of thermonuclear war and hope that the Russians and the Chinese will back down. Exactly. In other words, it's a game of chicken. Yeah. And you don't play chicken with thermonuclear weapons. Right. You don't play chicken with the kinds of advanced armaments and biological and chemical weapons that exist because you might end up having the human race wiped off the map. And the British don't really seem to care because they're committed to wiping out six out of seven billion people anyway. So you've got a stooge like Obama in there who doesn't know what he's doing. I mean, he, he likes watching drones. You know, he, apparently they did a tape of him or for him of drones hitting some bunker somewhere, and he watches it over and over and over in between watching basketball highlights. Yeah, I know. He's, the, the guy is a, a, a mental defective. But you've got yeah. people advising him who are the Tony Blair types. Samantha Power is one. Susan Rice is another. Valerie Jarrett is another. Yeah, these are, these are his handlers, in other words. And you have the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the, and the intelligence community saying Iran is not developing nuclear weapons yet. Iran tends to be more rational than we are giving them credit for. And you have an alliance of Republicans and Joe Lieberman types calling for General Dempsey's head. Your listeners need to realize that we have to defend General Dempsey, that the yeah. chief of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, Clapper, the national security director, uh, the general who heads the Defense Intelligence Agency, these are the people standing up saying we should not be heading toward war over Syria and Iran. Right. And in, in other Syria, words, what, Dempsey there... said, look, should we, should we be providing arms to al-Qaeda? Yeah, it is ridiculous. Because the opposition right now. I, exactly. These are graduates from Camp X-Ray and uh, Guantanamo. Uh, why are we doing this? We're doing it because it's stupid. <laughs> and, you know, they should have already learned, oh, well, look what's going on in Libya. Look what's going on in Egypt. They haven't solved anything. We now yeah, have Libya ongoing civil war in these countries. catastrophe. Yeah. And they're importing the Libyan fighters into Syria. I know that. And what they're doing is they're guaranteeing that the civil war is going to heat up more and more and cause even more, more disaster. And the Saudis are, as usual, in the middle of it, playing a dirty role as British operatives. Well, the Saudis are going to get burned because eventually they're going to get fried for this game they're playing, which is a game that's going to eventually get them invaded and destroyed. Yeah, because they're a minority in terms of, if they break the Middle East into Sunni versus Shia versus Alawite versus this one and that one, the Wahhabites are a minority. Yeah, they're going to get, they're going to get crunched. Yeah. And the British, as always, like to, to divide and conquer, but this one is going to be a bad decision that eventually is going to come back on them and bite them. Back in a moment with Harley Schlanger. Stay tuned. Everybody does want to rule the world. Let's do an analysis to figure out how they're trying to rule the world. And as we pull apart policies, we realize that you don't want a gold standard. If you're going to take over the Fed, what you've got to do is not have the obligations of the Fed Reserve. You don't want to abolish it. You want to take it over. You want to have it fully uh, operational under the control of the U.S. Congress uh, that would control the coining of money, not people like uh, Obama promising money to Angela Merkel, $1.1 trillion delivered uh, on and after Christmas Day the European Central Bank. That by itself is impeachable. Uh, we need an impeachment starting today. And I honestly think that Obama uh, is being pushed both ways. On the one hand, uh, the Israelis would like to attack tomorrow. Uh, his advisors tell him, the military advisors tell him, don't attack. But I think that they would like to have enough conflict that he can ride the coattails of being a war president to get a second term. Well, that's, and this that's is a, definitely the case, and that's why there's still a danger, a very serious danger. Very danger, big it's, danger, because in other words, he's only electable, I think. Once we can boil this down to whoever the candidate is, it'll be anybody but Obama. And I'm worried that at that point that Obama's advisors will say, let's push the button. Well, that's, let's do that's, it. Their, that's been their strategy all along, because right. 
that he probably should have waited a year before he killed bin Laden because people are going to no longer uh, remember that. He didn't, that he didn't well kill bin Laden. The he, election. He, he killed the ghost of bin Laden. Bin Laden died of renal failure years before. This is all but, just but a game. That's why these. This is a political, a public relations operation where Obama is saying, I got bin Laden, I got uh, he's Gaddafi. Full of it. Yeah, I, I, I have direct contacts that told me that bin Laden died of renal failure years before. And what he did, basically, that afterward, they cleaned up by killing the SEAL Team 6 that was involved. So uh, I know I work with special forces in Dell, and I have special contacts. I can tell you this is a total scammed lie. And, in fact, Obama's such a liar, he probably even believes his lie because he's such a socio-psychopath. Well, the point, that's exactly the point. He doesn't know how to, de to determine the difference between when he's being lied to and manipulated and when he thinks he makes a decision. I know, it's really bizarre. And that makes him an ideal dictator, but it also puts him with a very severe weakness to be an effective dictator. And one of the things that, that LaRouche is saying is for his own sake, you've got to get him out of the White House because otherwise they're going to end up killing him at some point. Well, when he becomes uh, less useful or he tries to balk it because it starts to strip away at his own ego structure, then we're going to have a real unstable... Uh, dictator like Nero when he uh, made his horse one of the members of the Roman Senate or uh, he did other obscene things. Well, you know, the other point is that if you have that kind of situation with Obama and he's assassinated, that would be an attempt to trigger chaos in the urban centers. Now, I don't think it'll work because I don't think, I think most of the increasing uh, section of the black population that's falling out of the middle class, uh, even though they would probably vote for Obama, I don't think they go out in the streets and riot for him, because I think he's lost mm. that support. But it's not a white on black is, issue anyway. The, the whole issue is, is not race. America's gone beyond the race issue. It, you know, they've got to leave it alone and stop this. Well, and this is race. why the issue of Bill Clinton is so important, because yeah. if you had Clinton, who, who provided a certain kind of Unifier, even though, look, he compromised, he did all kinds of things that were wrong. But he did draw a line at a certain point, and he fought Gingrich in 1996. Right. Remember the uh, shutdown of the government and these kinds of things? Uh, he showed an ability to fight, but he also was a compulsive 68er who thought he could do what he wanted and get away with it. Yeah. And that's what destroyed his presidency. That kind of weakness in a generation is what is endangering our nation. Now, the one grouping of that generation that doesn't have it is the military. And it's not all the military, but right now we're lucky that we have people like Dempsey, like uh, the guy who heads up the Defense Intelligence Agency. Uh, these are people who have actually been in warfare. They know what it's like to see their comrades get shot and killed. They know what it's like to call the parents of your troops and console them over the loss of their son or daughter. Right. Now, Obama doesn't know that. He doesn't have that human connection. And this is why we have a real obligation to stop the talk that's coming out of these windbags like McCain and Lieberman and Lindsey Graham. I mean, this is treason, if you ask me, when McCain and uh, Lindsey Graham were in Jerusalem last week. They met with Netanyahu, and they came out afterwards saying they agree with Netanyahu that Dempsey is wrong and he should step down. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Now, Netanyahu's coming to Washington this week. Right. We've got a couple of important events coming up. Uh, there are the uh, Russian elections on Sunday, and there's an APAC conference. The American-Israel Public Affairs Committee moved their conference up from April to march on an emergency basis. Oh, yeah, I'm sure, just so they can manipulate the whole process. They're well, they're need bringing to have in Ehud Barak, who's coming in tomorrow to meet with Obama, the defense minister, and then Netanyahu. And Obama is going to address AIPAC, I think, right after Netanyahu. Well, I think what they so, need is they, they need a scheduled psychotherapist to fly in to treat <laughs> Ehud Barak and Netanyahu before they actually meet. And they should have boxing gloves hanging on the door of the White House when they walk in there to meet Barack, because I'm sure Barack would like to give him a good whack in the face, because the last time uh, Netanyahu treated uh, Obama, you remember, despite yeah. whether whoever he is, they treat him and the office of the presidency with great disrespect, and that should not happen. Well, 
the, and the reason is that Netanyahu is nothing but a British thug. Yeah, and exactly. he knows he's a thug. You no, know, Obama right. doesn't know he's a thug. Obama's doing unconstitutional things that, that threaten the lives of, of hundreds of millions of people, and he's not aware of it. Netanyahu knows exactly what he's doing. He's committed to the British goal of genocide, and he's willing to help them. And he's willing to start with 80 million Iranians. And, and the reality is that if he launches this attack on Iran, it may be the, the biggest disaster for the uh, Israeli Jews because they're going to be the targets of, of a hellish counter assault. Yeah, exactly. And so you have this conference coming up with Barack, uh, Netanyahu, and then Barack Obama. They're going to try and put Obama in a corner. Now, what's interesting is the, the military advisor to Joe Biden gave a talk yesterday to a Jewish group in New York City. I think his name is Blinken. And he defended Dempsey. And that's interesting because, you know, for whatever else he is, Biden is not a complete idiot. Oh, actually, I heard that uh, Biden actually is has a higher IQ than a lot of people give him credit for. The problem is he also is a bit of a socialite, so he'll well, tend to hold opportunist. back. Well, he's an Right, so the problem is that he, now, well, what he needs to do is open up his mouth as vice president instead of being yeah. an idiot just going to social functions and realize that you're putting the whole country in. in. See, he's got way more international uh, experience dealing with uh, international sure. politics than Obama, and yet he doesn't speak out. This, but his economic advisor, Jared Bernstein, uh, resigned last year and put out all a series of papers saying we're lying about unemployment figures, we're lying about the improvement in the economy, it's getting worse. Right, exactly, of course. So Biden has some people around him, and I'm not promoting Joe Biden. No, but, but the thing is that we uh, have... At this point, he, I'd rather have him in the some, White House than Obama. Well, though Biden actually has the potential to, to actually say something because he knows the policies that are going on are stupid. For example, why is the Obama administration blocking the XL pipeline? Three years they've been studying it. Yes, they need to go around areas where they don't hydrofrack and destroy lands or go over territorial lands of yeah, tribal people. They could people do that so easily. That's, that's they, not they, the problem. The problem they, is that they should have. They did this already. The country. That's why Obama is doing it. Exactly. He's a demolition man. We shouldn't call demo man. You know, and he should give him a hard hat. Uh, you know, before election time, he says, you know, it will say right across the front of it, elect me and my job will be done. And have a big wrecking ball with a map of the United States on it. Well, and I'm sure you heard that there's a, a new campaign being run in the Senate to repeal the Independent Payment Advisory Board that Obama's health care set up. And it's got 17 Democrats who have now signed on. Wow. It's crumbling, and in June, when this comes up before the Supreme Court, guess what? The wrecking ball is going to destroy the Obama nation health care system. get into some of these other important topics. Uh, well, know, actually, I, I, we, we would, I, I mentioned the Russian election. But yes, let's even that. McFaul, who's the U.S. ambassador, who's really a, a dirty tricks operative, is now admitting that Putin's going to win with anywhere between 55 and 65 percent of the vote. But it's in that context that the other day the uh, Russians broke up an assassination attempt against Putin. Yeah. It was being run by Chechen separatists from guess where? The city of London. Oh my gosh. And the, uh, one of the guys <laughs> who was caught and uh, uh, spoke on camera after he was caught said that he had just flown from London to Odessa, the Black Sea port, where the, the reason they found this is that there was an explosion three days ago in, a, in an apartment in Odessa. And the Ukrainian special forces moved in and caught these terrorists. And yeah. they, they showed plans for them to fly to Moscow and plant explosives that would be used to kill Putin after the election. Now, the, rather than get too focused on this, because there have been other attempts against Putin, the, the interesting thing to look at 
is what Putin has been saying in his election campaign. Because he's been saying, look, we do need to have political parties that have positions and will fight for election. But we cannot have foreign governments funding opposition forces inside Russia. Right. And he said, what would the United States think if the Russians set up a a political party and funded it with hundreds of millions of dollars the way the National Endowment for Democracy, which was set up under Bush Sr., right. has been funding dissident groups in modern Russia. And if you think about it, you know, look at what we're doing. Who gave the United States or the British the right to set up through human rights groups and the International Criminal Court and things like that the, the, the ability to say who is good for a country or not. You know, in, in Syria, they just had an election on this reform, and about 60% of the people voted, and they voted 88% for Assad's proposal. Now, that was immediately denounced as, as propaganda. Well, you had 60% of the people vote, and 88% of them voted for Assad. So who's to say whether the Syrian people really want to get rid of Assad? They don't want to get rid of him. Well, we have no, a situation where, firstly, we know that he met, this is Assad now, met with the, uh, the Christian Orthodox uh, clergy. He met with the uh, Alawites, which are a branch of Shia. Shia. And that's his, his family is an Alawite. His family. family. And he also met with the more moderate uh, Sunnis who uh, think that he holds everybody together and is willing to actually give them a representation. That's right. Uh, for years in Syria, it's very typical that the foreign minister of Syria is an Orthodox Christian. Yeah. And if people don't understand this, it's a similar type of thing that happened in Iraq, even under Saddam yeah, Hussein. Remember Tariq Aziz, who I think was just executed, who was the vice president, he was an Iraqi Christian. Exactly. So we, what, what people don't understand is we pull apart this country. This is going to blow up not just into a little civil war between 42 tribes like in, in Libya. This is going to create a fault line that will guarantee a thermonuclear, biological, and chemical war that will not only be regional, it will guarantee a worldwide conflict that will bring in the Southern Republic of Tajikistan, Azerbaijan, and Russia and China will be dragged into this, including the Uyghurs, the Uyghurs which are... Northwestern China are all Muslim Chinese. People don't understand. Yeah, this. I, don't, I don't know if you saw this the other day, but the Indians, for the first time, have been very aggressive at the UN and elsewhere. The former Indian ambassador to the UN denounced the so-called Friends of Syria meeting in Tunisia as a bunch of arrogant imperial colonial policy. Exactly. In other words, it's another form of colonialism by London-based terror groups. There are Muslim Masonic uh, Caliphate that are vassals for the for the banks of, of, of Europe and England. And the That's reason LaRouche put out his statement on the terrible mistake of Bill Clinton is that Hillary Clinton went to that meeting in Tunisia and defended the so-called Syrian opposition forces who couldn't even complete the meeting. They, they, they had three splits during the meeting of the so-called Syrian National Council. Yeah, they call it, and you know what's funny, they call them the Free Syrian Army, when in fact, they're not even Syrian. These are primarily... Uh, they're, they're Jordanian. Tun and Tunisian. They're, 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 these are graduates from Camp X-Ray and Guantanamo. These are Al-Qaeda. They're the ones, the Mujahideen, that were trained to became the monsters that we trained and armed to defeat the Russians in Afghanistan, and now the same monsters that were in Libya and Tunisia, and the old pirate capital... Of, of eastern Libya are now down at the border of Syria trying to get it there soon. Of course, now the Syrians have, have mined the border, and they've decided, no, you're not coming in here. And when they say that there's, uh, what we should do is have humanitarian uh, missions get the citizens and the civilians out of the way, because what they've done is they're using human shields there in Homs and in Aleppo, uh, because he's right across the border from Turkey and Lebanon, so that they can use human shields and say it's the Terrible Syrian army are, are, are bombing and shelling uh, and civilians. And what we're looking at, I, I think you said it just five minutes ago, yeah. we're looking at a desperate game run by the British financial networks who are bankrupt. 
Right. And they're still trying to collect from nations the liquid capital that, that can be created to bail them out for another day or another week. Wow. You know, on Tuesday, a trillion euros, that's about $1.2 trillion, was created by the European Central Bank in uh, three-year uh, bonds that they made available at 1% right. to the banks, which meant that the banks could go in and uh, borrow at 1% and buy these bonds at 3%, and they're making 2% just by taking the bonds. And That's there's no crazy. risk for them except that this is going to trigger a hyperinflationary collapse. And that's why the British are willing to risk World War III, because they're basically saying, and by they, I mean the British financial elite, we're about to lose everything. So we're going to take the risk that maybe we can break the resistance of Russia and China and win this. And if we can't, well, it was a nice run while we had it. That's, that's the British philosophy, isn't it? And that's why it's so dangerous, because... Our leaders either get assassinated when they stand up against them, as in the case of Lincoln, as in the case of McKinley, as in the case of John Kennedy, or they back down, as in the case of uh, Bill Clinton, or they're on their side, as in the case of the Bushes and Obama. Yeah, exactly. So we need American patriots, and that's why I, I'm calling on your listeners to go to the LaRouchePact.com website Take down the leaflet, the terrible mistake of Bill Clinton, which defends the Joint Chiefs of Staff against the cowardice of the Clintons and the treachery of Obama. And get it around. Go to Democrats and say, look, is this your party? Is this what you voted for when you put Obama in there? You know, we've got to shame people with the foolishness of their decisions. And I, I think that if we can do that, we might be able to still shift this election because but there's no reason why someone in the Congress couldn't introduce a bill of impeachment. I know of a very senior Republican from Louisiana, Congressman, who said, look, we're hoping to beat him in November, and that's why we don't want to use the impeachment issue now. And the person who was talking no, to him that's... said, well, you're risking the, the future of humanity. Well, what, what they have to understand is... Mitt Romney? Yeah, the wild card is I will put money on it. I'm not, I'm not a gambler. That what will happen is if they if they don't start impeachment proceedings against Obama, the wild card of war will pop out between May and October. And what Marush is saying is that it, it would be before the election, but he's saying exactly. it could even be as early as this weekend. Exactly. In other words, the big vote and uh, the APAC conference goes wild you could see Israel attacking by next week. Right, and by the way, their policy, and it's come out in there in, in Israeli newspapers, that their policy publicly now is, we won't tell America. That's right. And it's public. They're not going right. to even advise our military people if they're actually in the air on their way with nukes to hit yep. Iranian so territory. Go to com and download the leaflet and get it around. Exactly, and the phone number to call again is 800 922 Oh my gosh, every week it's like you do a year of news. It's not like uh, any time in the past. And uh, check out the LaRouche website, LaRouchePAC.com, PUB.com. Take your Harley back next week.